So yeah, my name is Chris Scott. I am a fifth year broadcasting student here at the university. I am from Omaha, Nebraska, and I ended up here because um, it was far enough away from home to where, you know, I still had like that freedom that I wanted, but then it was still close enough to where like, if things got a little crazy, I could still go home if I needed to. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Shandine Long. I am a second year political science pre-law major with a minor in Native American studies. I'm planning to become a Native American attorney someday. Um, how I got here was I had recently gotten the Buffet Scholarship and that kind of just I kind of suggested we go here because they have a really good law program here, so hopefully we can stick it out today. Hello everyone, welcome. Um, my name is Sky Morgan. I'm the Vice President of Unite. I am from Winnebago, Nebraska. Um, I am a Business Administration Management major. I chose this major, I was came in undecided my first two years, so um, I finally realized like, okay, I'm in, the, I'm in the business, I'm gonna go this route and let's see where I can go from there. I came to UNL because I have a lot of family in the area and I wasn't really too sure how I would adjust. But um, after this first degree, I plan on leaving Nebraska for sure. But thanks for coming, guys. Hello. Um, hello, my name is Angelica Solomon. I'm the president of Unite. I'm currently a senior working on my civil engineering degree in structures. And how I got here is both my parents came to UNL. And I loved the football team. I've been watching them since I was in Campers. I have season tickets. I go every year. And yeah, that's basically how I got here. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Missy Olson Whitefeather. I'm originally from New Hope, Minnesota, if anybody knows that. I am a first year criminal justice major. Um, I chose UNL because I ended up receiving the Buffett um, and also my dad wanted me to go to a Big Ten school. I'm the first in my family to go to college, so it's like a pretty big deal. Um, what I want to do after college is I want to be a U.S. Marshal and arrest people and you know travel and do things like that, so yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shayna LaPointe, and this is my fifth and final year here at UNL. Um, I'm going to school as a secondary English language arts English teacher, and I'm minoring in Native American studies, and what I hope to do with that is just teach for a little while, most likely in the LPS area, and then go and get my master's in counseling to be a guidance counselor for Native students. Um, on the different reservations, and then um, I'm from Nebraska. Did I say where? Niagara. I'm from Niagara, Nebraska. And um, I came here because I got the Susan Buffett, and um, I knew I wasn't going to school unless I had it paid for. So this was my best financial aid option. Can you hear me without a mic? I don't really, okay, I'll just talk like <laughs> um, My name is Noah Keller, I'm from Fall City, Nebraska. Does anybody know where Fall City's at? You do? Okay. Uh, so you understand why I went to Lincoln then. But um, Fall City's a small town and there's not a whole lot going on. Uh, I decided to go into chemical engineering. There's just a lot of opportunity with that and I'm not really sure what I want to do yet. Um, I'm figuring that out as I go with classes and such, but uh, I'm really excited to get moving on and get my bachelor's and get out of here. I'm Nicole Rodriguez. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. I'm a first year psychology major and a minor in Spanish. Uh, I really don't know what I want to do with that, but I think that's okay. Um, how I got here, I kind of, it was just a really quick decision and uh, I didn't really want to go to UNL because everybody that I went to high school with was going there, so I kind of wanted to get away. So that's how I ended up here. All right, um, Unite is a group for Native American students on campus to come together and like do different events and talk and see how we can make social change in our community. Um, I forgot what Unite stands for. It stands for the University of Nebraska and the Tribal Exchange. Not only do we do events, like we have a big event that we plan in the spring, it's a powwow, 
um, to honor the graduates, it's, um, whether it's high school, whatever, we just kind of want to have that type of um, association with their powwow. And then we do social, which is kind of like a home away from home, because it's such a small group on campus, and then we kind of like bring everyone together. Try to, we try to do monthly socials, but we meet every, every week, and, it's kind of, and we try to do some like professional uh, development. We have um, an advisor who helps us, who works here in the multicultural building, and so we kind of all gather here once a week, and sometimes we do um, potlucks, just different types of things. So. Uh, I would talk from like a freshman perspective. Um, since it's my first time really being away from home, um, at home I was basically one of the caretakers. I paid bills, took care of my dad, my sister. So I was so used to taking care of other people. When you come to college, you all of a sudden have to take care of yourself, which if you come from a household where you're helping out a lot or you have a big family and you're always thinking about everybody else and not yourself, that can really change how you feel and, and how you look at how school goes for you. So coming into a group like Unite, and it's people who look like you or you know think the same way as you, it can give you uh, that outlook on um, how to feel and you can talk about your feelings and stuff like that, especially homesickness. Now that my family's out of state, I have people to go talk to and you know that's not strictly faculty or people that are in your <laughs> classes and you have more to talk about besides school. And you just have that home away from home in a sense with a group like that, so. And being a part of a group is like, um, especially with Unite, we try to develop you professionally. So when you create events, you're learning all these different skills, um, time management, um, learning how to use Excel, different uh, organization. organization type thing, interpersonal skills. You're faced to approach like, like now, you're faced to like, if you are shy, you're forced to, you know, get out of that bubble. And that, that's what um, being a part of Unite gives you those opportunities to shy away from what you're afraid of. Um, so a small town goes from everybody knows everybody and everybody knows everything, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, it's kind of, when you move into a big city like Lincoln, you just have to find your small community. And um, I find comfort in the small town, even though I wanted to get out of it. And I have a group of friends and a group of people that uh, know everybody and we know everything about each other. So when I want to reach out and get into that big environment, I'm, a, I'm able to. But if I want to drop back into that comfort zone of small town, I can go back to that group of friends that I have. And that's basically how I was able to transition from small town to Second biggest in the or second biggest in Nebraska. I'm also from a small town, Diver, about 300 people. And I think I love the transition because I'm not a small town person. I love living in Lincoln. Um, so there's so many. I was that type of person that did everything, and it was easy to do everything in a small town. So when I moved to Lincoln, there was so much for me to do, and so I think what I had to deal with was learning how to manage all of that and learning how to pick and choose. Because um, you know, back in Niagara, I could do this and that. I could be president of um, student council and FBLA, but here I couldn't be president of multiple organizations. I couldn't even be secretary of multiple organizations. So I really had to pick and choose where my passions were, and that's when. I chose Unite, and that's when I focused on Unite. And also, it it feels nice focusing, focusing on something other than your schoolwork. Like, as much as I love doing what I'm doing, it's good to focus on other groups and activities besides what are you reading this week for class. Another thing, too, is that there's gas stations over past 10 and restaurants over past 10. Right, <laughs> <laughs> you can go get food at 3 in the morning. It's nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not really trying, um, but I have been like trying to learn about uh, how I was like, well, my past had a family were supposedly um, part Cherokee and Choctaw, so I've been trying to like, do a lot of research on those tribes. I'm going to say it in the... <coughs> okay.
I'm
and then coming to here, this is a small city for me. So, yeah. <laughs> this was a small city for me. So, like, so the adjustment was like almost like a culture shock because I was so used to seeing brown people like everywhere, just there. And then when I got here, I was like, I knew Sky because she was my cousin. And she was like, come to Unite, come to Unite. So what honestly led to me going to Unite was I got to meet our advisor, who her name was Amanda Ponce. And she was just, I have a woman crush on her. So the thing about joining groups is you get to find mentors and people to look up to. And that was my biggest thing when I joined Unite. And she now works at um, somewhere, Metro Community, College. Metro Community College in Omaha. And she actually, I'm a part of a sorority, but she got me to join the sorority. And come to find out, she was the founder of our sorority, Lambda Vega New Sorority Incorporated. It is a Latina-based sorority, but that's probably, it makes sense, because I came from New Mexico to join a Latina sorority, so it kind of makes sense. I felt kind of close to um, Mexican culture as well as my native culture, because I always um, uh, try to practice my native culture. And yeah, just joining something, you make connections automatically. Um, they might be little things, like just someone to study with, and then pretty soon that leads to more people. So you, Unite is a good start. We'll help you find all the people you need, help you with your resources, do you need help with financial aid, we'll walk you over to the office, that type of thing. So if you do end up coming here, like look for our faces, or ask one of, ask one of your advisors, hey, how do I get a hold of Unite? And we're willing to help you throughout your, your transition to here. Also, same, I came from Minnesota, which is a big city coming to Omaha. Well, I, went, I graduated from Omaha, so it was kind of a big transition with that because, you know, if you ever been, it's like really slow where Minneapolis is a big city. And as well as Unite, I was kind of looking, I kind of went through identity crisis. It's like back home, uh, Native life is just looked on as like alcoholic, all of this, all the bad thing that's wrong with reservations and things like that. So I, I always have been looking for something to show the better side of being Native and all the happy things that we've accomplished in our history and all of that stuff because back at home it's always negative, negative, negative and I don't really get exposure to that. So Unite kind of helped me look at being Native in a different light instead of being negative about it, so. <laughs> for me, I was coming here, it was definitely a culture shock for me because I came from Omaha, and I went to like a lot of schools where there were a lot of people that looked like me, um, they talked like me, they kind of thought the same way that I did, and then I came here, and it definitely was like the polar opposite. Um, so really kind of finding a place where I belong on campus was kind of difficult at first, and so for about two and a half to like three years of my college experience, I kind of like kept myself alive and was kind of like really secluded and isolated. Um, so then I ended up finding the Multicultural Center. Um, I started getting involved with a lot of organizations there. And one of the organizations I heard a lot about was Unite. Everyone was always talking, talking about Unite. Um, uh, there would be like uh, the Indian title sales and like all these other cool things like powwow and things like that. And I was like, well, what's that? What do need? Where is it? <laughs> so um, when I finally got the chance to go to my first Unite meeting, um, I kind of like came in and just sat down. I was like, it was a really small room, so like everyone's just staring at you and you're staring at everyone. <laughs> 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 okay, can we say hello? <laughs> they just stare at you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, like they kind of got me out of my comfort zone a little bit and just like kind of introduced myself to everyone and like kind of threw me right into the fire. Okay, this is what we're working on. So what of a role, like how much, how big of a role is this taking? You know, because they really wanted to let me get involved, like, immediately. Um, and I really appreciated that because it kind of not only helped me learn more about Native culture, but it also kind of made me feel like I was participating and bringing something to the group as opposed to, like, just sitting there and not doing anything. And I've been a part of the night ever since, and I like what every second of it. Well, how's the worst yeah. I get some. Um, so when I first came to campus, I was a part of two groups before I got here. One was a learning community for 
engineers, so it put me on the floor of other engineers. So the first two semesters, um, we'd be able to do all the calculus, the physics, the chemistries together. And then another one was Oasis that I got put with. Um, dude, those are the only two that I stuck with all the way through because I felt the most welcome through it all. And uh, even though the learning community got over after a year, I'm still at Oasis, and I go talk to Karen all the time. She's my advisor. Um, there's just so many groups on campus that help you feel more involved. Uh, I got connected to Gabe through one of my other scholarships. And uh, funny story, actually. He uh, set up a meeting so I could go eat with uh, Dr. Cornelius, Dr. Rylett, and himself. And uh, we set up for the state. It was uh, the day of my, one of my Kim uh, lectures. And it wasn't until later in the day. So I went to class in pajamas with shorts underneath and on a hoodie. I get a call from Professor Cornelius, hey, are you ready to go eat? And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so I wasn't kidding. <laughs> I looked over to my uh, buddy I went to class with, and I was like, can you just take my stuff back after lecture? He goes, yeah. So I'm about 150 people meet towards the front. I stand up in pajamas and a hoodie and just squeak all the way out and then leave. I, this is my first time meeting him, and I brought my suit up and everything to make a good first impression. And of course, I have to meet him in pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I went and met with uh, Dr. Rylett, and we went to Laszlo's, right? A nicer restaurant, and I walk in with pajamas and a hoodie. <laughs> And it was, it was a great time, and they didn't say anything about me wearing pajamas. I knew that they thought something about me wearing pajamas. Now I do! <laughs> <laughs> but um, even after that, he still, keep, still keeps emailing me, keeps checking up on me. Um, they, I still feel welcomed by them, even though their first impression is this freshman college kid in pajamas. Um, not very professional, but... Uh, the organizations here will make you feel welcome. They are going to help you succeed. Every college is going to say, come on in. We're going to help you out. We'll make sure you get it all. Here, I know for sure from experience that they have the groups that are going to get you through it. Yeah, and um, to add on to that, being in Unite kind of, if, you, if you're not a very outgoing person, uh, for me, um, it's very easy for me to talk to people, but if you have that fear of like getting yourself out there, Unite's a good starting point. I'm also part of the Barbell Club, uh, also powerlifting club. I lift weights with my partner over there. Um, so being able to be in Unite, if you don't have confidence, like I said, it can help you um, build your confidence and then also branch yourself out to different clubs. It's like cooking club, powerlifting, all of that stuff. And then once you start building your resume like that, then it's really easy for you to, you know, get that job that you want. So that, that we just, for. just my advice to you guys is to get involved. Like when I came here, I, I was scared. I was scared. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to make friends. <laughs> Nothing. But uh, she she messaged me and she's like, "Come come to Unite." Uh, it was our first day, and I, I walked in and I'm like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "I was I was I get so nervous. I'm like talking to people." But my advice is to get involved, and it will be hard, but it's super easy. Like he said, there are oh, so many groups that will reach out to you, and it's just you have you have to be the one to go. And it took a lot for me to go, but but yeah, I would say get involved and. That's how you that's how you make friends. That's how you build relationships with everybody. So I noticed that um, a lot of you said business administration or business route. So like you're going that second year or going to be going to four year for business still. Um, when you go to your classes, I mean, from going from a smaller, I took some, I took, I've had some classes at a community college for that this summer summertime. So I know how small they are. And then I've also went to a small school, but I've even lived in Michigan, and I've went to a huge school, so I kind of got both sides of the spectrum. And then coming here, it was it was a transition, but at the same time, it wasn't it wasn't really. But sitting sitting in the lecture halls, sometimes I mean, like for macroeconomics, you'll have like two hundred and something kids in there. I mean, at first, that's a little bit kind of scary, you know. But the things that the teachers do is they post their office hours. And me, I see that, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go meet my teacher because they, they can put my face, name to a face, you know. And um, if I'm struggling with something, I would definitely go there. And then they have um, uh, peer tutors, 
and I take advantage of that because some of that stuff to me doesn't come to me. Do you like economics? I mean, yes, I'm a business major. Do I like it? Eh, it's okay. That's not really my focus. I'm a management, more people-based based communication type person. So, I mean, when I have those resources, I would take advantage of those. And so when you do come here and when you, when you are in class or wherever you go, you take advantage of the office hours and meeting with your professor. They show up. They like that because, I mean, they have to sit there for some time. <coughs> Yeah. A lot of people told me that they didn't like the you know, UNO because the professors didn't care about you, the lectures are too big, this and that. Um, those are the same people that go to the lectures, don't raise their hand to ask a question during the lecture, and don't go to the office hours. So those people, those professors are there to help you. They have a lot of people going through, like my Jim Kim lecture was 150 people for eight sections. So. Um, about, there's a few professors for a lot of kids, and if you go talk to them and go talk to their TAs and everything, they are willing to help you. You just have to be willing to go get it. That's just it. Mine was going to study. So, like, I went to school on the reservation, and I also, like I said, I went to school in Michigan. On the reservation when I went to school, sometimes like I would be able, I'd go home and I'd not go at home, I'd, I'd fly through and stuff. And then in Michigan, I mean, I kind of adjusted a little bit, but when I came here, I'm like, there's so much different stuff to do. I have class at, for maybe an hour and 15 minutes, and I have the rest of the day. Now what? Netflix? No. Like, I really had to adjust and come up with, like, okay, I need to do this. I need to study. Like, I need to make a grade. Once it, once it clicked in my mind that, this money, whether it's financial aid, scholarship, is like real money going towards, like I'm paying for this class, like I'm sitting in this lecture and I'm gonna check my phone, wait, what am I doing? I'm paying for this, I'm wasting money and I'm gonna be having to pay debt later on. So once I, that clicked in my mind, I had to like change my thinking towards studying, like I needed to learn how to study. Yeah, like going off of that, you have so much time. Being a freshman, we have our classes, you have your homework, and then you have five hours until you go to sleep. And there's so many people trying to pull you, let's go out, let's do this, let's do this. And you have to sit there and really choose what you want to do. Do you want to sit there and prepare yourself for that exam or do you want to go out to dinner or whatever, waste money? And then also going back to that introduction, my family ended up, is, has moved out of state. And I come from a household where I was paying bills, I was taking care of my siblings, taking care of my parents. So coming here and having all that time to focus on yourself, you discover like who you really are. But also that brings up like issues within yourself that you might have never experienced before. And it's really hard for you. You might sit there and just like break down and cry. I know I've had a lot of crying sessions and the, this first semester of college. So it's okay to cry, just know that. It's okay to cry, right? And, just uh, your first semester in a big university like this, especially if, you, if you're if you from a small town, you're really gonna discover who you are as a person and go through the emotional roller coaster that everyone talks about, so. Yeah, that's like the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so the weird thing is just taking advantage of the resources that you have and also like taking care of yourself because you get really stressed. I'm not, I'm not gonna hurt you guys. You get really stressed. And still, like, I'm not adjusted yet. Like how uh, Sky said, I don't know how to study. Like, I, I for some classes, for some classes, I, I get a couple attempts to take an exam. <coughs> and I kid you not, last night I was, was up, I was up really, really late. Like, like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this uh, exam right, blah, blah, blah. And I got the same exact score as my first time. And it was so, it was really disappointing, but, there's so many resources that you can get. There's writing centers, there's math centers, everything. And if you're a family, there are people there to help you. And so, yeah, and they also have like student support services to like first generation students. And like I utilize that with calculus. Um, yeah, I was in there. <laughs> like I needed, I I needed help with that. And then I think what I did do was I adjusted the the time I went to sleep. And so like all this like way earlier than I used to, and I go to bed about like eleven. That's early to me. So. I think my biggest thing is self-care, like education is my life, literally it's just my life. That's all I do is study, do homework, study, do homework, study, do homework. And what, one thing that I enjoy doing is working out. So at the time, like, I would literally go like at 11 to 12 and that's kind of like not healthy or whatever, or I would just miss meals 
So like when you come to school, make sure you plan that out, plan your meals out because I will literally not eat because I want to study and do my homework. And that and, and that's not very healthy. Like it it took a toll on me because I was getting sick every semester. Like I got bronchitis, all of that stuff, and I got the flu. You know, taking care of yourself is very important, and always finding at least an hour to relieve your stress. Um, for me, my biggest struggle coming into college was that uh, it was a tough transition into the classrooms here. Uh, coming from high school, it was like, you know, I had that mentality of like, you know, it was super easy. I really didn't have to try very hard, and I was still really like on a roll and whatnot, and all this sort of stuff. And then you come to college, and it's like, you're struggling just to get like a C or a B. You know, and that's perfectly okay. <laughs> you know, at first it's kind of a shock, but eventually, you know, it's perfectly okay to like struggle in classes because there are like tons of resources here to help you um, and really like the support that you need. And so, uh, being able to take advantage of, of those resources um, and overall just reaching out when I needed help, um, that was really something that helped me out a lot. I know a lot of people don't really like to reach out when they need help sometimes, and like, guys, it's definitely okay to reach out when you need help. Um, never feel like it's not okay, <laughs> that you have to do everything alone. Everyone needs that helping hand at some point in their life, and like, that one helping hand could really be the difference of you, like, going up to you and, like, going up to you and Like I said, crying is very good. <laughs> <laughs> I think, run it out. Run it out, let I think my, my biggest challenge, my first year, I have two different challenges. So like my first year was finding friends, finding people who could talk to me, who share the same perspectives as me. Um, I came from like a really like you know how I said they're my family, but like my family was more like culture wise. It was more like I went to college all the time. I I, I wanted to go to college when I was in college and I kinda had to stop doing that and like people didn't really share the same perspectives. Like I did with my poli sci class in my sociology class and I'd be not very my my perspective, my views and what how I thought it was way different from what everyone else thought or I didn't feel comfortable like within those classes. But you know, like they said, um, go to the TA or go to the professor, talk to them. I um, recently my re my biggest recent one was when my professor for a sociology class and they talked about how Native Americans how a lot of us don't go to college anymore because we don't have, we don't share the same perspective as everyone else and that's why we, we don't go here. And I was like, it's totally wrong. Like, you're, like, I had to speak out of class because it was so, it was kind of like heart, like it was heart, heartbreaking to just, yeah, that's why the numbers are so low. And I was like, no, it's like, yeah, I guess that's true in some aspect. And like, have you ever thought about outside, or, like outside sources, like how we don't have like a good like education system or like, you know, um, like other things on the reservation that could like admit to like kids not going to like bigger universities and he's like, Oh yeah, all they go is to like community colleges. I'm like, No, oh, that's not true. This is not how it happens. Like So prove them wrong. Right? Yeah, that's prove them wrong, much, right? That's all I was trying to say. Prove them wrong. I was like, I'm a Native American, I was like, I'm sitting in this lecture from like a hundred plus kids in here and I'm talking about like how we as Native Americans, we're still trying to prove people wrong each and every day because, you know, it's hard, it's like hard to see the parts that they already show on the slides because it is kind of true and like the percentage here is low for Native Americans, but we're still trying to make a difference on campus. We're still trying to identify, how people identify as Native American. You know, there's just different things like that. But my challenge is like finding people that I can actually relate to. My second challenge for this year is probably Having the time to balance things up. Like, I'm honestly in, I'm in a lot of words right now, but like having the time to like do different things is um, hard for me. And then also, for my intro to law class, my teacher knows me by face, because I remember the first day I said, Oh, my, my name's Shandi. He's like, Your name's Shandi? I'm going to call you out now. <laughs> and so he, he literally, like, every day, it's always like, um, I'm gonna say like this like uh, whole scenario and then he'll be like, okay, Shawnee, what do you think? And I'm like sitting there like, and there's like 200 plus kids in there and we're all like in the law field. So like it's a very competitive field as well. So like 
you know, you try not to like say something dumb. He's like, oh no, it's fine if you say something dumb because that means you don't know the question. And I'll tell you the answer. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay. So like, it's just it's different when you have like a personal relationship with, relationship with like your professor because then they'll get to know you. They'll like, they'll pick on you a little bit and they'll, they'll challenge you in class. Like, you know, because you'll have to think about at that moment, like, oh, did you do the reading? You feel like if you didn't do the reading, and you obviously, it shows that you didn't do it because like you can't answer the question. But like literally everything he'll say is like from the reading, so you have to like think about it long term. I think building a, a relationship with your professor at TA, it, it helps you a lot because that's how I made it through my first year because I had a lot of like, rough times with my papers and I went to the TA and they gave me feedback and they sent them everything. And they really helped me a lot in freshman year, so that's kind of my time. Degree-specific questions, or what you're thinking about your career path. I already I already said that like, I'm gonna have to read them right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I already did express like how I'm gonna bring it back to my community. Kind of how like my mom wanted me to do, and that's kind of what I wanted to do. I've always loved like college ever since I was a kid. I, well, not college, but school in general, education itself. So, like I've always been like I love getting good grades. That's what my thing was: getting good grades. So I like the refreshing feeling of getting an A plus and a test was really hard or studying for something. It, it was a refreshing, refreshing, refreshing feeling that I liked. So that's why I always studied so hard and. I know, like, my mom reminds me, like, almost every day, like, hey, you're going to do this someday. Like, you know, she, she sends me a little text, like, hey, remember, remember that thing you told me when you were little? Like, this is what you're going to do. Like, you just think about how you were in mock trial, sitting in a court, um, you know, learning different procedures and how to talk to a judge. You know, like, you're going to do that someday in the future. You're going to be fighting for our people. You can be fighting for your um, different things in the, in the tribe. You know what's going on. You know, you can see, like, different fights from other different people. From community members every day. Um, that's what you want to do. So you should do it. I did hear, or uh, well, I did read in like different textbooks that whenever we did the transition from like um, the BIA, there was um, originally the, in the BIA there was just um, basically white people running uh, running our tribe from the BIA. But they usually said like, oh, you're, we're a sovereign nation. No, we're not really technically sovereign yeah, because we have white sovereign. people running our nation. And so what I read in the textbook is that most tribal courts. I'll have, um, you know, white attorneys or people who are basically fresh out of like law school or barely got to the law and perspective don't, and they don't really know. Like, yeah, they, they don't have a background of like the things that they can do or should do. Yeah, they don't have a background. Like, it is the technology. Yeah, I kind of got this. I kind of felt a little bit hurt about that because that's kind of how it was. Like, yeah, most tribal courts, they all have like people who don't care about the tribal members and such like that stuff. Um, so maybe we could just start you know, bringing more tribal things. <laughs>